Most humans today live in cities, including me, of course, which bring us brightly colored artificial light sources. But when God opens a window, he closes a door. Too much artificial light shines into the atmosphere, causing the phenomenon of bright sky, which makes stars, planets and other astronomical phenomena not easy to be observed. Duh. However, depending on the size of the city, the level of development, and the intelligence of the planning department, the amount of light pollution you are exposed to varies, which directly determines whether or not you are eligible to enjoy some of the astronomical phenomena in front of your window. This video helps you understand the level of light pollution in the sky above you and what this means for the stars above you. Open Google and search for light pollution maps and you'll find some interactive maps based on Bortles light pollution scales, such as the light pollution map, which allows you to see the light pollution levels in your location. Simply enter your location and the map will show you the light pollution levels in your neighborhood. But what's the point of knowing what level you are? This kind of grading, built on abstract concepts, doesn't make it easy to understand exactly how light pollution can affect our stars, so this video will give lots of concrete examples to help with understanding. Here we go. Bortle scale, 7 to 8. Meaning, a colorful sky. Major cities like New York, Tokyo, and Mumbai. If you live in a place like this, have you ever noticed dark clouds during the day that turn into white clouds at night? That's because your city, at night, shoots so many lights that it shines through the dark clouds. At this Bortle scale, the naked eye is only able to see some brightest stars in the night sky, like Betelgeuse, Arcturus, and planets like Venus and Jupiter. Anything dimmer than magnitude 2 is basically invisible. The Polaris star is at magnitude 2, by the way. So this star is the dimmest star you can see in the brightest cities. Bortle scale, 5 to 6. Meaning, a suburban glow. If you're lucky enough to live in the suburbs, the night sky starts to regain some of its charm. Bright constellations like Orion or Scorpius will stand out, and stars down to magnitude 3 or 4 might be visible. However, don't expect to see much detail in nebulae or galaxies without a telescope. Here, the orange glow of streetlight still bleeds into the sky, softly reminding you that the city isn't too far away. By the way, most meteor shower events only make sense below Bortle Scale 5, although sometimes you can also see meteors in regions with higher scale, it would be extremely rare. Bortle Scale, 3 to 4 meaning, a rural sanctuary. Ah, the countryside, a place where crickets chirp, and the stars finally breathe freely. At this level, the Milky Way is still shy, but on a moonless night, you might catch a faint glimpse of it, especially near the zenith. You can spot star clusters like the Pleiades with the naked eye and even resolve a hint of their blue glow. The Andromeda Galaxy? Visible as a faint smudge in the northern sky. Constellations not only pop but look three-dimensional against the velvet darkness. Here, the night sky starts to feel infinite, a reminder of how small and interconnected we truly are. Finally, Bortle Scale, 1 to 2. Meaning, the ultimate darkness. Places like, the Great Victoria Desert, the Central Pacific, the Antarctica. Welcome to Stargazing Paradise. These locations are rare, think isolated mountaintops, remote deserts, or designated dark sky reserves. The sky here is a celestial masterpiece, you're able to see thousands of stars at once. The Milky Way isn't just visible, it casts faint shadows. Star clusters sparkle like diamonds, nebulae reveal their intricate details, and galaxies far beyond Andromeda come into view. The sky becomes so clear in detail that you can almost feel the Earth's rotation as you watch constellations slowly drift. Under these conditions, you'll understand why ancient astronomers dedicated their lives to studying the heavens. So how deeply are your stars poisoned by light pollution? If you're serious about stargazing, plan a trip to a dark sky site. By the way, have you noticed that the background blue color of each video is a different blue? 